You're watching Business Nigeria. Now, let's talk about the SVB bank collapse. The failure of the Silicon Valley Bank over the weekend sent jitters across the market, creating fears that the ripple effect blamed on the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes could spread to other banks. The development which has affected bank shares in Asia and Europe, despite reassurances from the U.S. president that America's financial system is safe and made efforts to limit the fallout. Silicon Valley Bank, which uh, specialized in lending to technology companies, was shut down by U.S. regulators who seized its assets on Friday. It was the biggest failure of the U.S. bank since the financial crisis in 2008. Let's talk this through by, uh, we have joining me live virtually, virtually to assessing the impact of these developments on the global market is an investment banker and stockbroker, Mukhtar Mohammed. Thank you so much for joining us on Business Nigeria. Uh, first and foremost, um, what's your reading? What's your assessment of the uh, circumstances that led to the collapse of two U.S. banks last week? Uh, thank you, Brian, for having me. Um, you, you need to look at the two banks, what they are into. Those two banks are banks that are specialized banks. Um, the Silicon Valley banks most specialized with the tech companies and Signature Bank mostly with the, those that trade on crypto. And when you look at these two sectors, you see they've been a sector that have a lot of issues uh, for the past months. Uh, when you look at the tech companies, you look at um, um, Amazon, you look at Google, you look at um, uh, Meta, that's the parent company of Facebook, you realize they've downsizing for a while because of the challenges. So what happened to Silicon, Silicon Valley Bank is just that um, most of the test company bank there and uh, also the bank after you know bank after you've saved um, some money to pay your depositors then you have to lend some then you have to also invest some those most of the investment were done into uh, government bond long-term u.s um, government bond and because of the hike in interest rates and those 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 um those values of those bonds came down and they needed to sell some of those bonds to be able to offset um, um, demands of the tech company because the tech company also were going through some challenges. One of those challenges is that they needed some of these funds to be able to pay off some of their workers that they have laid off and to do to to do other things. So what they sold in the in the in, in of the uh, bond was not okay. So it uh, was not enough for them to meet all with some of the demands. So definitely um, that those challenges come came to play and then the government have to step in. Uh, when you look at the Signature Bank also, Signature Bank is largely a um, bank that is into cryptocurrency. And uh, you know that sector also has been a very challenging sector for the past years. And some of these crypto companies are folding up and they are trying to re get their funds back. And that was what caused the challenges that were there. Now the ripple effect that it had in other banks and other places was because most of the banks in the U.S., most the big bank or other banks that made it to spread to Asia and all that thing. They are both listed, some of them are listed in the Asia um, um, companies, in, I mean, in China stock exchange, in other, in UK stock exchange, in other stock exchange, in the European um, stock exchange, some of those um, banks shares are listed. And most of these banks normally also invest in government. So once those challenges are, um, the effect on them sometime over the weekend. But, um, they've stabilized a little, especially with the assurance from the from the president of the United States uh, and with other measures that have been put in place. Mm. Well, then, uh, American investors have since dumped banking shares. You know, while the values of some big uh, big banks have dropped. So, do you think that more banks could fall despite assurances from the regulatory uh, regulatory authorities? I don't think so. Um, with what the um, the regulatory authority were able to do, they came together. The the treasury, um, they also the bank, the 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 the, 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 the reserve bank also, insurance also, uh, the insurance um, uh, um, um, sect. I mean, what the, the the organ responsible for insurance, they all came together and they have come up with a policy to insure all the banks. We must know about when it comes to bank failure. Uh, most times, it's not the um, customers that suffer; it's the investors that actually suffer, and that's why you saw a lot of investors were pulling up their, their selling, train, um, make, um, dumping those shares to go to other sector because uh, um, normally the bank will normally um, be ready to sort, sort out um, maybe their deposit, their own deposit insurance scheme. They're always ready to sort out um, the customers, 
and in the US, they 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 they, they, they can sort you out up to two hundred and fifty thousand um, um, dollars if you have up to that amount, you get your full amount. But in this case of Signature Bank and also Silicon Bank, uh, everybody that has uh, uh, funds uh, will get the exact amount of funds because then the government have decided to go into the what they call like their own sinking fund, a fund that is set aside to manage crises like this to make sure everybody uh, goes them. So. I think the normal is uh, what we call in uh, investment market panic. Uh, when things like that happen, a lot of um, investors will panic. But those investors that have the strength to stand, sometimes they are the ones that you see where you say about offsetting, I mean, dumping of these shares. These shares have been dumped and somebody else is picking it. And those people that picked it are now the one laughing because they, they, there's a gradual recovery from where they, they were over the weekend to where they are here today. Mm. Well, so going by the global interbank system where markets are connected, what influence are you expecting the American banks collapse to exert on uh, African markets? Well, like I said, some of these banks are specialized banks. Um, one deal with tech company, the other one trade on crypto. Um, so they were specialized banks. But if you look at the African banking space, realize that most of our banks are not specialized banks. Um, now banks have become part of a holding companies and those holding companies are involved in a lot of payment settlement and uh, real estate even um, infrastructural development so they, they, they are the one we call it diversify their investments so we don't have a particular specialized bank in nigeria at the moment or in most african countries all these banks are they become that at one shop for a lot of products so with that, you, you don't expect that those sectors, those uh, sector agriculture, commerce, aviation, you know, they will collapse at, at once. So that's what um, the African banks have been able to diversify. It's not a one-shot bank. It's, it's, it's a bank. I mean, it's not a bank that specializes on one product. They have different products. And if you take the Nigerian bank, for example, they, they now have holding companies. So the banks are now part of the holding companies, not just the bank stand alone. So... With that, you, 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 you don't think there will be so much um, challenge with African Bank and Nigerian banks. Mm. So let's, um, let me take it, uh, bring it back to the studio. I've got the uh, TVC News marketer, Efian Ekop, is joining me on the show. Thank you so much for joining us, Ekop. Uh, talk you. to us about the impact of these you know, bank collapse on uh, the global and the local markets. You know that the global stock markets, they are in interconnected just as the financial uh, system. And because majority of the banks, they do interbank loans, then they do forex, then even investments across borders will have to pass through the banks. So this interconnectivity is so sensitive. And whenever any type of collapse like what we have experienced in America happens, um, you know, investment managers, governments, even bank customers, they are always uh, very, very anxious about uh, their funds, if you understand, because the collapse of one particular institution can really cause great damage to not only one economy, you know, several economies or institutions. That's why in America, you see the presidents rushed very well to assure the citizens that the, you know, there's no need to panic, that the financial system in America is very strong and uh, stable. But at the same time, he assured that taxpayers' money won't be used, you know, to offset, uh, uh, you know, investors' uh, interest. That is, uh, those who put their money or the owners of that particular collapse banks, what you call shareholders. That, that, so taxpayers would not uh, be cheated. So on global space, interconnectivity bring this sensitivity also. That's why you saw institutions in Europe and Asia, immediately they were worried. Markets, you know, crash and people dump or basically banking uh, securities. Even a big company like uh, Morgan Stanley shares, uh, you know, uh, shares drop even as at, uh, mm. yesterday. That of uh, Bank of America equally dropped mm -hmm. because of the level that you think contagious influence, you know, should be contained. When you come to Africa, we have uh, weak markets mm. due to our peculiar nature. Sometimes things like this will happen that will affect our market directly, and you do not see actions being taken. 
we, I am yet to know any African country that has reacted, you know, positively to what has happened in America. It is not as if we may not have an uh, effect of it. It may not be now. It may be in the future. Right. Do you understand? Because one, our banks, they are not very, very strong. Many of them always cross overseas to go and seek for funds Absolutely. out there. So if big banks in America, Europe, you know, are down, where would Nigerian or other African institutions, you know, source their funds. Mm. So that's the, the, the issue. Just, just like um, when, when the it, big economies, it, you know, sneeze, it, it, that sneeze, that rather, why Nigeria tends to catch We always want to catch you know, strong financial institutions, and the banks are very, very regulated to ensure that all of these uh, do not uh, happen. All right, Mokhtar, before I let you go, um, you know, let's bring it down home. You know, domestically, with the cash crunch and the recent closures of banking doors to, you know, the public, do you think all is well with the Nigerian banking system? I think all is well with the Nigerian banking system. All is not well with the regulator. So, because the Nigerian banking system are not the one that prints money. So what we have cash scarcity has to do with the regulator not printing enough cash for the bank to distribute. Um, I tend to disagree slightly with um, Acon. Like I said, the African banks are a one-shop bank with a lot of product. Um, what has happened in America, the big banks were not collapsing because they are also into other areas. The, most of the big banks uh, are also holding companies. So those, like I said, the Silicon Valley Bank and um, Signature Bank are one-shop bank, a specialized bank in a particular uh, product. One is on the, for the tech and the other one is for cryptocurrency. And so definitely, and those places are going through their challenges. And so if you are the one that bank those, those com companies, then you see what those challenges. Um, it's no need to panic for an African bank to begin to panic. Um, the, the only people that were supposed to panic, even the Signature Bank in the uh, UK, was bought over by HSBC for one pound so immediately. And this, even if they said what is happening there was not even closely related to that, but just to bring stability in the market. So uh, the, the, the interrelated, uh, when you, if a bank like Bank of America or HSBC, or you say Morgan Stanley, like you mentioned, or Citibank, those are the banks that if they have problem, then it boils down to Africa because most are the banks, most African companies, mm. and banks are also having one transaction or the other. With, but for these banks, I, I don't, I don't think so. Mm. Well, we say thank you very kindly. Uh, you know, giving us all the impact. You know, all the assessments you've given to the impact these developments has got on the global and, of course, the uh, local market. An investment banker and stock broker, Mohtar Mohammed. Thank you so much for your time.